happening as it's happening right now around the NBA. Hey, OKC, why so sad? Uh, next question. Sekou is here with the latest MVP ladder. Sekou, why no LeBron? Why no Jokic? And why no Paul George? Next question. Boogie's debut tonight. Will it work in the Bay? Uh, next question. Well, we've got all the answers. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll talk with the newsmakers and news reporters with opinion, perspective, and predictions. This is 10 Before Tip, presented by Ford. Happy Friday. Come on in as we discuss the biggest stories of the day and set the table for the night in the NBA. Glad you could be with us. I'm Jared Greenberg. 10 before tip number one. It's been nearly a year in the making following a grueling recovery from a torn Achilles. Tonight is the night DeMarcus Cousins makes his much anticipated Warriors debut. It's what's happening right now. As long as the guys in the room know what the uh, situation is, we know what the ultimate goal is. That's all that matters. So, uh, we won't really determine judgment from day to day. Thank you. You'll like no recovery Last tomorrow, question. good or bad? Oh, I don't watch it. Yeah, so say what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Boogie and the Warriors at Staples Center to take on the Clippers tonight. DeMarcus Cousins slated to be in the starting lineup. In our starting lineup each and every Friday from NBA.com, Sekou Smith and our West Coast reporter joining us from Staples Center tonight. The epicenter of the NBA is, of course, the great Sean Powell. Okay, Sean, let's get the vibe, let's get the anticipation, set the table and the mood for us of what's happening tonight with DeMarcus Cousins joining this incredible all-star lineup. Well, evidently, everybody is optimistic. Otherwise, uh, he would not be on the floor. Uh, uh, I think initially, Steve Kerr said DeMarcus Cousins probably wouldn't be coming back for the all-star break. But here he is, and not only is he back, he's in the starting lineup. Um, I would say, however, uh, he should wear a question mark on his jersey, or maybe a bunch of question marks, maybe make him look like the Riddler in the next Batman movie, <laughs> only because we just don't have any answers right now. Um, we don't know how he's going to fit in. We don't know whether he can keep up with the pays, how his body's going to respond. We're not going to know tonight. We're not going to know next week. Uh, but however, for the Warriors' sake, hopefully we know pretty soon what they have in the Marcus Cousins and how it all works. This is one of the stranger things I can remember, too, Jared, Sean. A guy coming back from the kind of injury yep. that he had, and there's been no pretense. Not only are you starting, we're going to play you and let you get it all out, let you, you know, shake all the rust out in the midst of a season where the Warriors don't have that cushion like they've had in years past. It's going to be very interesting. What if Boogie Cousins comes back and disrupts things? What if, what if Steph is no longer able to get the, you know, the good looks that he's getting? because Boogie's out there and everything is off. The chemistry is not right. I'm very curious to see what they'll do if this goes sideways. Do you course change and, and come back and say, you know what, maybe we'll bring Boogie off the well, bench or maybe what, we'll do something different. What's sideways? Sideways is you don't play as well as they've played here these last, what, nine, ten games. Right. I mean, Boogie is a has been a ball-dominant player in this league, you know, in the time that he's become an all-star and become one of the best big men in the game. You can't ask Boogie to come back and play against what his nature is and expect it not to be an issue, or, or at least for there to be some friction. Sean, you were at Shoot Around today where Steve Kerr was discussing how the Warriors will use him, and it was interesting to hear him say, no minutes restriction tonight for Boogie Cousins. You yeah, Well, Boogie quickly chimed in and says, I'm not going to be out there for 30 minutes. <laughs> um, I think it's understood that you're just going to see how he responds. I mean, I would imagine tonight, maybe 20 minutes, you know, see if he has his win, and they'll just take it from there. Uh, the beauty of it is that he's coming to a team where Steph Curry is probably playing the best of his career. Kevin Durant is on MVP level. They're just a few days removed from blowing out the Nuggets, the, probably their biggest competition in the West. And also, they don't need DeMarcus Cousins. DeMarcus Cousins is a luxury for this team. They won championship without him. They can win another championship this year with or without him. Well, I, listen, this is a great opportunity. The last time the Warriors were at Staples against the Clippers, that was bull up night, right? right. That was that was Katie and Draymond getting into it. So now you have an opportunity to kind of wipe that memory away. 
And if Biggie, you know, let's say Boogie goes out and has a monster night, right. then you get a lift off of that and you get an opportunity to not only feel good about Boogie's, you know, debut and, and integrating him into this lineup going into Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, but also the stretch run between now and All-Star break. If Boogie can find a rhythm in this little patch of the schedule, that sets you up for a great stretch run if you're the Warriors. I think we all agree that this is also a great opportunity for Boogie to cash in, right, when it comes to restrict, unrestricted free agency this summer. If, if he is not only healthy, plays within the system, puts up big numbers, and shows he can be a good team player, then there's going to be 30 teams out there that want to pay him as much money as they physically can. But let's let's go here. What, what would be, if you had to put your finger on one thing here, Sean, what's your biggest concern for Boogie Cousins within the Warrior system starting tonight? Well, uh, obviously where he fits, uh, you, have, you have a lot of players in this team who are offensive-minded. Boogie is offensive-minded. He's an offensive player, not necessarily a defensive center. Uh, and also, just as you said, Jared, uh, this is a, a money year for him. You have to remember last summer, he had no offers. Nobody wanted him. At least they weren't going to pay him any kind of big money. So he had to pick up the phone and call the Warriors. How does he handle that dynamic? The fact that he's going to come to a team where he's not going to be the first, second, maybe not even third option, but yet impress other teams enough where he can get his free agent jackpot. That'll be an interesting thing to watch. Thank you. Your one concern? My one concern is that Boogie doesn't fit into the flow that the Warriors are playing with right now. It's not just about getting up three-point shots or, or playing at tempo. It's about ball movement and body movement. Is Boogie going to be able to fit in in that mix in terms of Steph's great off the ball. Kevin Durant can play long stretches without dominating the ball. Boogie's going to have to get minutes on the floor, Jared, where he's not touching the ball right. for, for stretches, unlike any time in his career. Even with New Orleans last year when he and Anthony Davis were sharing, you know, a lot of the load, he was clearly the 1A one, one or 1B, I mean, however you want right. to, you know, determine it. But now, as Sean said, he could be the third or fourth option yeah. on a given night. How does he handle that? I would say I'll throw out the idea, too, of what happens at the end of games. If, if Steve Kerr is clearly going to have Steph, Clay, and Durant, what if he decides to have Iguodala and Draymond, who he's liked to have out there closing games, and not Draymond, and not have DeMarcus in a night where he's putting up big numbers? But that's better for the team. How does he react? I think it'll be interesting to watch. Say who's going to stick around. Sean Powell will be checking out your work on NBA.com, covering tonight's DeMarcus Cousins debut for the Warriors at the Clippers. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Ten before tip number two. It's star power. I've seen everything you can see defensively throughout this entire year. Literally everything. The guys just leaving their men running in double team, trapping, um, everything. Ah, the beard is the hottest man on planet Earth right now. Sekou Smith's MVP ladder on NBA.com. Here's the latest list. Welcome back to the list, Joel Embiid. He's in at number five. At number four, Kawhi stays put, as does Steph Curry at number three. And here comes the shakeup. Giannis moving back from one to two. And, of course, the bearded one himself for the third time this year is at Sekou Smith's top spot on the MVP ladder. There's no doubt what Harden has been doing with all of the injuries. But they lost the other night. Is this, is this almost like a precursor to like, okay, yeah, we get it, and you're deserving now, but... But no, it's it's one game right. um, in a game. They should have won. If we really look at it, you know, up the way they were at the end of regulation, you could look at it and maybe say, maybe drive to the basket. Once. Yeah, James Harden <laughs> maybe ran out of gas or maybe it, it took all that time for, you know, for Brooklyn to actually double team him and get the ball out of his hands, make somebody else try and beat him. Right. But Jared, I would I'd be remiss if if we found a way not to have James Harden at the number one spot right now. You can't play this well for this long. Right in this league with under these circumstances and somebody else being that spot, especially not when you're the reigning Kia MVP. I mean, sh we do need to show him a little respect sure. in that regard. But I think this thing gets really interesting now. Steph is back playing at a nuclear level. Yep. Giannis has been there all season long. And what's going to happen when LeBron James finally makes his return back to that Lakers lineup and gets right. to the base? All right, so – I'm going to be overly optimistic here. I'm feeling really good on this Friday. I'm not sure why. I'm not, not, not sure what's going on in my world. But I'm, I, I really like your list, and I love that Steph is up to three because I think we need to appreciate how good he's been. The one player I'm curious about 
is choosing Embiid over the likes of either Jokic or Paul George to put in your top five? Well, a lot of it, you, you know, you look at and how have their teams fared in, in recent games, obviously, in the last week. Embiid's team is, is, is rolling. And I thought Embiid showed me something playing through that sore back and performing the way he did against Indiana. Jokic got exposed a little bit the other night against the Warriors. Great player, having a great season, but you realize the distance between himself and maybe Steph and KD and players on that level when you see him in a head-to-head matchup. Paul George, of, of course, is suffering from the Thunder's lack of success here recently. But all those guys are in that same mix. They could, you know, if this was MVP musical chairs, these guys would all be standing and sitting, standing and sitting. Well, sit. if that's exactly what this is, <laughs> that's exactly what you do every Friday. And I'm the music, and I got my hands on the music. Right, so you're the DJ. It's up to me. It's up to me. Seven four tip number three. It's what's buzzing today around the NBA. The real measurement of a man is where he stands in adversity. So when adversity hits. It's nothing better, in my opinion, to see how you act and see what you do as a team, as a unit, as a man. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Russ with a little more to say there than what we played at the top of the show when he didn't want to talk about him being able to actually hit three free throws, which had been a problem for him earlier in the year with his awful free throw shooting. OKC, though, losing to the LeBronless Lakers. What did that game last night at home tell you about the Thunder, who were supposed to be the best defense in basketball right after they got blown out by one of the worst offenses in basketball, the Hawks, a couple of nights earlier? Well, it, it told me more about what the Lakers are doing and how desperate they are because even on a night when, you're, you know, when your defense doesn't show up the way the Thunders did, and they've, they've had some struggles here recently. They've been attacked defensively. Clearly, teams have, have found something that they can go after with this Thunder team that's been locked down defensively all season, right. and they're exploiting it. To me, Jared, what this is about is Russ not being fully comfortable with his own game. And if he's right. the man with, in control of things all the time the way he is, it makes it difficult for but, him. But how does he go one for nine late in the game and Paul George not get a shot attempt in the fourth quarter? That's on Russ. And, right? You're right. And, that's on, and I think we saw him accept, accept some of that responsibility. I guarantee you it's, it's a discussion they've had as a team. If Billy Donovan hasn't verbalized that to Russ, I'm sure somebody else on that staff has. And then he and Paul George, the relationship they have, he's got to know that Paul George needs the ball, at least in a, some of those instances where you give him an opportunity to continue to do what he's done all season, which is deliver for the fun. All right, Sekou, plenty more to come on this edition of 10 Before Tip. Most improved player candidate, D'Angelo Russell and the Nets have been hot. Winners of six of eight. We'll go to Orlando and speak with Nets superstar analyst Sarah Kustak making her 10 before tip debut. And it's coming up next.